This video series is brought to you by the ASU Writing Center within the Academic Support Network. Thank you for joining me as we discuss part two of critical reading and engaging with sources. This video, our second in this series, will discuss approaching critical reading. Let's get started. As we start this discussion, we want to share a definition for critical reading. Critical reading is a set of habits that allows you to be more intentional about how you read and what you take away from reading. The word critical here captures your engagement with the text. You're not just absorbing the information, but processing it, forming your own opinion, analysis, or interpretation of it. You're asking questions, noticing your reactions to what the text is saying, and coming away with an understanding of what the text is saying and your own thoughts about it. Critical can get at active and purposeful reading, but the word critical captures the engagement with the text, your analysis and interpretation, and that's what we will focus on today. So now that we understand the value of reading critically, how do we go about this? When reading critically, you're going to read with the purpose of understanding and evaluating analyzing and questioning the material you read for your assignment. Can you consider the different implications of the text? What conclusions can you draw from the text? What questions does the text address or need to address? Has it answered critical questions? Are there unaddressed gaps? Can you draw connections between different texts? Are there texts that agree or disagree with the one you've read? Take notes, highlight, and outline. Engage with the text. Can you explain what you read to a friend? Reading critically means you are not just reading for information, but reading to think and consider the information being shared. It is also important to form an opinion after you read, even about scholarly sources. While these are experts, you don't have to agree with everything they write. Forming an opinion helps you to remember and apply the information you read. For example, after reading the article on the top marketing strategies used in 2017, I disagreed with two of the 10 strategies because, or after reading Frankenstein, I decided that maybe Dr. Frankenstein was the real monster. And finally, after reading about the brain in this research article in a psychology journal, I realized that the amygdala deserves more attention in how we understand human reactions. These are valuable opinions that you can form after reading scholarly research. Another aspect of critical reading is to consider if you are being source focused or synthesis focused. When we read one source or go source by source, this is often what the reading process looks like. We start by reading and annotating, then process the information, and consider what pieces of the source are important to your paper or project. This is source-focused reading. The method doesn't account for some of the messiness and serendipity of reading. Messiness and serendipity refer to the fact that your reading of one source could influence you in many ways. It can help you rethink a topic, inspire you to find another source. This type of process can foster narrowness and prevent a writer from seeing the larger picture of sources. In other words, don't always read just to put sources into a paper. Once you've read two or three sources, it's time to go back and decide if the source should still be integrated into your paper. If so, how can you compare and contrast the sources? This leans towards synthesis-focused reading, which is where you bring sources together to determine what kind of information they provide and how you would want to use them in your research. You can see how integrated the reading, the processing, and the integration into your paper is with your reading of other sources. This process accounts for the messiness of critical reading and how reading one source may impact how you think and feel about others. 
If you have questions about anything we covered in this video, our online study hub is a great place to post questions and get a tutor response. To support critical reading as well as synthesis focused reading, you can see this synthesis and comparison log, which encourages you to compare and contrast sources as you read critically. Thank you for joining us to discuss approaching critical reading, and we hope to see you in our next segment discussing critical reading strategies. Thank you.